Hi, this is Pete Wardell, and recently I interviewed Andy Nyman. Now, if you don't know who Andy is, here's a quick rundown for you. Formerly known as the Tabletop Grifter, Andy Nyman is a talented magician and mentalist who got offered the part that eventually became Darren Brown, but said, no thanks, I'm not Darren Brown, but I will become a writer on the show and the director of all the live shows, which he did, and he won loads of awards for it. But why did he turn it down? Because he wanted to focus on what makes him happy. And what's that? Well, being an actor is what makes Andy Nyman happy, and he's achieving massive amounts of success here as well. He's appeared in countless feature films, on TV, and also on the stage. And that's where he is at the moment, on the stage in the West End, in a show that he co-wrote and co-directed, and that show is called Ghost Stories. Go and see it. It will scare the living daylights out of you. And that is a brief introduction to a man they call Andy Nightmare. Hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Particularly you. Well, I've been opening in the West End for six weeks oh, right. now. There you go. There's me not having any time to prepare for this. So which theatre you want out? Uh, it's the Duke Ghost Stories. Yeah. Is the show. At the Duke of York's Theatre. In the West End, the jewel in the West End's crown, so I'm told. And this is a show that you've written? I've co-written it with my oldest friend, Jeremy Dyson. Of Who the League was of Fame. League of Gentlemen, yeah. Yeah, we've known each other since, best friends since we were 15. He was my best man. I didn't get married at 15, right. but we met at 15. Um, and so we both wrote it, and we both directed it, along with one other director, and I star in it. Well, the fir I think the first secret is... I, I don't really perceive success. Right, so uh, if, if I asked you to define success, you wouldn't... Being happy. You're right. That, to me, is the, is the ultimate goal. Great and definition. That is, that's the biggest secret, is that people... What sort of language am I, am I allowed to you use? You can use any language you like, Andy. Yeah, I'm not bothered, right. really. So, I, I think that's where people fuck up. Right. Because it's just about, oh, no, if I could get on telly, that, yeah. that, that's my goal. If I could get, uh, if I could get my own cruise ship, act, uh, cruise ship act, that's it. Oh no! If I could be Blaine, if I could be the next Blaine, yeah, 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 yeah. it's just absolutely the wrong way. Because anyone who's ever achieved <clears throat> any of their goals will know that the minute you've achieved a goal, it doesn't really feel like a goal. You don't look at it and think it's amazing. How brilliant! Aren't I clever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, are all the things that aren't working the way you wanted them to work, all the mistakes. And the fact, actually, this goal isn't really worth having because it's not what I thought it was. What about that? Well, what I should do is next I should aim right. for that. It's a never-ending thing. Which, and it, I have never, ever, ever perceived myself as a magician, ever. The magic was right. just a hobby. Yeah. In my head, I grew up of that generation that wanted to be, to be De Niro or Pacino yeah. or one of those guys. So for me, it was absolutely about the acting. It was always tunnel vision for me, and I knew that's what I wanted. Yeah. So to refer back to what you were saying with the Darren stuff, you know, I was offered the mind reading special on Channel Four before Darren. Yeah. They wanted me to do it, and were very pushy. Yeah, I wasn't about sure I was allowed to say that or not. So well, no, of course you can. It's public. It's sort of public knowledge, yeah. uh, and I turned it down. I had absolutely no interest in doing it, which because I knew it wouldn't make me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Um, and you've not, you don't look back on it and go, oh, not for one. Fantastic. I, I never, I, and, and that's nothing to do with achieving my own things. It's not now I can look back and think, well, I'm in a play on the West End. I was right to do that. For you know, I've been working with Darren for a decade, and not for one moment, not for one second of that, have I ever thought, oh, I really screwed up. I should have taken that. Right. I should have taken it. It's not what I wanted to be. I don't want to be a magician. Yeah. I didn't want to. There's no judgment on magicians no. doing magic as a living, but it's not what I wanted. I knew it would not make me happy. And I sort of remember that from when we first met. I mean, I, which has got to be 20 years ago yeah. when we were doing, yeah. doing sort of, as I say, there was the Marvins thing. It was sort of how I was introduced to you. Yeah. And I, I'd trained as an actor as well. I'd done the whole drama thing, but I think... And I remember when I was at drama school, there was always this thing. There was always the people who wanted to act, but then there was a group of people who needed to act. And I always yeah. perceived you as someone who needed to act. That, that yeah. was kind of, that's all, that was everything. That was kind yes. of, you know, someone could offer you a £2,000 corporate gig, but then if a, an acting job to do Shakespeare around the corner for 50 quid and a cheese sandwich came along, you'd yeah. have dropped the corporate and gone and done the Shakespeare. Absolutely. And that was always about as well. That's where magic, and don't get me wrong, I adore magic and I'm very passionate about it and it's been a huge part of my life. But it was enabling for me. It was about, what I'll do is I'll do lots of gigs and I'll charge proper money. Yeah. 
never undercut. I always set what I thought was a decent wage and earned decent money off it because I thought, great, what I'll do is I'll stockpile money. It's what's known as the fuck you fund.